Okay, you can sashay in. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Nuts and Cherries. I'm Nuts. And I'm Cherries. And today we're going to be showing you guys three ways how to make a delicious vegetarian meal out of the very, very humble cauliflower. So what are cauliflowers good for? I don't know. <laughs> cauliflowers are really nutritious. They're really versatile. As the saying goes, if cauliflowers can become anything, so can you. <laughs> Believe in yourself. This is also a motivational cooking show. Yeah, this is what we're all about. We didn't ask for it, but we're giving it to you. It basically really good for you. <laughs> okay, first up, we're gonna be making kampung fried kali rice. This is a healthy take on a very delicious Malaysian comfort food. It's one of my favorite things to eat of all time. I love fried rice, so I'm gonna show you how to make this version. Let's go! Okay, you're gonna start by grabbing two cups of cauliflower. Cut them into more manageable smaller pieces and throw them in your food processor. Blitz on medium for a few seconds and be careful not to blend too long. We want the pieces fairly big and rice-like in texture. For a better texture, you can dry out your cauliflower at this point in the oven for 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, blend two tablespoons of dried anchovies, one teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Set that aside and then let's make the frying puree. Puree half a medium onion, one shallot, two garlic cloves, four bird's eye chili, one tablespoon dried vegetarian anchovies. You can also add in some water to ease the blending. Once it's smooth, it's ready for frying. Add one tablespoon of cooking oil into a hot pan and pour in your puree. Saute on medium till it's golden and browned. Then add your cauliflower rice and mix to combine. After one to two minutes, make some space and crack two eggs into the pan. Scramble the eggs in the pan and then combine with the rice. You can now add in two tablespoons of grinded up vegetarian anchovies and depending on the saltiness of your anchovies, you may want to add more salt to your liking. Now add half a cup of chopped up long beans and saute for 15 seconds. Finally, add a handful of kangkong and saute for a further 15 seconds. Plate it up with a mold and serve it with a side of chips to make it look super restaurant quality. Also, a side of sambal never hurt nobody, so there you go. Okay, let's see what Nat says about it. Guys, this is amazing. Wow. There's no fish in here, but I kid you not. It really just tastes like there's fish. I almost don't notice that it's not rice. This is delicious. This is so good. Recommended to try, guys. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna show you how to make a classic cauliflower margarita pizza. That's right, the whole crust is made just out of cauliflower completely, so pretty much a guilt free. All right, let's get to it. First, preheat your oven to 240 degrees Celsius and place your oven rack in the middle. We're gonna start off by blending two cups of cauliflower in your blending device of choice. Even an ancient model of the Thermomix will get the job done. We are looking for a flour-like texture here, so pulse until you see fit. Then add one egg, half cup of corn flour, two tablespoons of olive oil, a dash of salt, along with two tablespoons of cornstarch. Blend again until smooth and sticky, like your overprotective bake. Finally, add 150 grams of Parmesan and pulse just enough to combine. Next, oil your pan thoroughly and place baking paper on top, then oil again. Now it's time for the fun part. Just like molding Play-Doh, place your pizza dough on your pan and flatten out evenly. Stick your pan in the center of your oven rack and bake for 10 minutes. After that, cool your dough for about 3 minutes at room temperature. In the meantime, we are gonna make the sauce from scratch. I kid you not, it is super easy and a thousand times more delicious than store-bought. So it's one pan tomato paste, one and a half cups water, Water, a third cup olive oil, two cloves garlic, a dash of salt and black pepper, as well as half tablespoon dried oregano, half tablespoon dried basil, and half tablespoon dried rosemary into a blender and blend for a few minutes until it's all combined. See, I told you it was super easy. Spread your sauce onto your cool dough and sprinkle with mozzarella. You can top it off with sliced tomatoes or any topping of your choice. Bake for another five to seven minutes. Just like that, it is done. Mm. Smells so good. Garnish with basil leaves and serve it on a pretty platter for presentation value. Let's see, let's see, let's see what our Missy Cherries thinks. I have never had cauliflower pizza before ever in my life. It's definitely not pizza, but if you're craving pizza and on a diet, if it's totally would hit the spot because tomato sauce is really good. A low-fat mozzarella 
It was really yummy. It does kind of taste like cornbread, but I like cornbread. Yeah, it's a pretty good pizza base. Look at it. Really, really yummy. And finally, we're gonna show you guys how to make some buffalo collie wings. They're delicious. They're basically like buffalo wings, but made with cauliflower. It's a little bit healthier. So let's learn how to make them. Before starting our prep work, preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius. And then start by breaking up three quarter of a head of cauliflower into bite-sized pieces. The pieces should be mini drumstick sized like this. Next, prepare the coating. We need buttermilk for this, but if you don't have it, you can make your own by combining the juice of half a lemon with three quarter cups of milk. Let it sit for 15 minutes. Add three quarter cups of flour into a large bowl and to that add one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of salt. Mix to combine. Pour in your buttermilk and mix into a smooth batter. Then add in your cauliflower pieces and use a spatula to distribute the batter evenly around the pieces of cauliflower. Prepare a lined baking tray and place your cauliflower wing pieces on the tray spaced out so they're not touching. Bake for 20 to 25 minutes depending on your oven. In the meantime, let's make the buffalo sauce. In a small saucepan on medium heat, pour in two thirds of a cup of hot pepper sauce. To that, add half a cup of cold butter and one and a half tablespoons of white vinegar as well as a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Just, I don't know how to say that, wash the sauce, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, as well as a dash of salt. Mix it all around and then add a splash of maple and one tablespoon of cornstarch. You should get this yummy, sticky, thick consistency. Out of the oven, the cauliflower comes. They don't look so pretty right now, but they're gonna be gorgeous in just a moment. Add a bit of salt to keep it crisp and pour the sauce all over. Mix it to coat. Serve with some fresh cut celery and sour cream. Ah, would you look at those golden orange beauties? I kind of want to bathe myself in that sauce so I'd be just as beautiful. Okay, enough daydreaming. Time to feed Nat. Mmm. Oh my gosh. The flavor is super yummy. Obviously the texture is not a chicken, but it's soft and with a little bit of crunch. Mmm, it tastes like a really tender chicken actually. The flavors... It's a really, really good snack. So yummy! Mm. <laughs> Welcome back to Nuts and Cherries. I'm Nuts. And I'm Cherry. I just said I'm Nuts to everyone. <laughs> well, you are. Hey, I was the only one allowed to say something about myself.